fit, formidable, and fantastic. Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and welcome to a new episode. There's a worrying trend in the fitness community that I want to address. People putting unhealthy obsession and value on being contest lean for prolonged periods of time. I don't just mean in the context of a passing contest or a photo shoot, but damn near year-round, if not year-round, especially when there's no monetary, i.e. career, incentive to do so. Moreover, even going so far as to insult or to attempt to diminish the value, advice, or efforts of others who aren't lean enough in their eyes, which is a very relative thing when you think about it. Some people may consider lean enough something in the ballpark of Steve Reeves, where you are ab ready for the beach, but not so lean as to sport striations similar to the cracking and paintings from antiquity. Other, more extremists, don't consider someone lean until they have deep finger striations across their fucking ass cheeks and visible vascularity in the lower abs. In other words, ripped to shreds, and possibly as dry as a desert and grainy like sand. All of this without even considering context or a given person's activities and goals. For instance, the laughable scenario of a bodybuilder calling out a powerlifter for not being contest lean. And I've actually seen this before, recently in fact. This certainly screams of self-esteem issues or insecurity on their part, not to mention a large dose of narrow-sightedness. And it's not just competitors that are, tar are targets of this, but also everyday fitness or physique enthusiasts who simply love the iron game, want to look good, but also desire to maintain their health in the process. Even professionals in the fitness nutrition field are targets. For example, the widely sought-after sport nutritionist Alan Aragon, who is not himself the epitome of lean. Yet he is highly decorated, well-respected, widely published, educated, and commands massive turnouts at his conferences. But wait, he isn't contest lean, so he must not know what he's talking about, right? I've actually heard someone use Alan's lack of leanness before as a device to argue against the validity of his knowledge or services. I feel this, is, this ultra leanness mentality promotes serious body image issues, self-loathing, and eating disorders. Thus, I am doing this episode to educate my viewers, uh, push a message, and uh, possibly an unpopular message. Um, and I have been the target of this sort of attack myself, so don't feel alone if you are too. A target despite sharing photos of my abs before on social media. Abs, in case those flinging insults didn't catch that keyword. For a guy to have decently visible abs, he needs to be at least 12% body fat, depending on how developed he is, as well as his genetics. Most guys will require around about 10% to see their abs. So please tell me how lean you expect me to be for you, as if I sculpt my body for anyone else's approval. What an arrogant assumption. And that's a point for you all to keep in mind. Uh, work on improving for you. Uh, your body for you, not to please someone else. I've said before, I have no desire to get below 10%, or at the very least 8%, ever. I want to look full, round, and reasonably hard. I also want to uh, remain strong. I don't want to be catabolized, flat, and weak. And because I am a natural lifter, if I were to sink uh, my body fat much below that 8 to 10% minimum, that is precisely what would happen. That's the inconvenient truth. And therein lies the dilemma. I want all of that, but I also want to show my hard work at, with as much definition as possible. So for my goals, the 8 to 10% range is ample. I do not compete, nor do I plan to, and the health impacts are one of the reasons I don't compete. Um, and my health, specifically, uh, my hormones are very important to me as a man, and that hormone health translates to my ability to maintain muscle and push progressively heavier weights. So why castrate myself for no good reason? To each their own, but please don't arm your insecurities as weaponry against others who don't share your goals and ideals, or on a deeper level, personal and mental issues. And the advice I provide is science-based and solid. As I've mentioned in previous videos, when followed, my advice even gets results in others. And on that note, I've heard your requests. Um, I will be launching a vegan-focused business. If you'd like to be on top of updates for that and its launch, do sign up at the link in the description of this video. Now let's get down and dirty about body fat and health, specifically regarding hormones for both genders. 
I've mentioned in previous videos, and I will mention it again now. 10 to 15% is considered the recommended body fat range for health in males. But for the utterly physique obsessed, through hard work and meticulous diet, 8% can be maintained year round without much consequence. Any lower, specifically without the assistance of exogenous hormones, men will experience significant hormonal decline and crashes in sex drive, one comparable to castration. Furthermore, those ultra-low levels of body fat can cause depressions in thyroid hormone, growth hormone, IGF-1, metabolic rate, and one's immune system, generally speaking. We're talking a system-wide hormonal crash. Cortisol also significantly rises. Cortisol being a catabolic hormone. Catabolic is the opposite of anabolic. In other words, cortisol breaks shit down, for those who don't know. And with excess cortisol in the body, you can certainly expect to lose hard-earned muscle. Thus, if you are drug-free and sporting extremely low body fat levels, you are in a constant catabolic state until the situation is remedied, i.e. you elevate your body fat to the 8 to 15% range. And don't worry, unless your goal is to compete, a range of 8 to 15% body fat will have you looking defined, keep you strong, all while promoting your hormone health. And if you look at surveys, generally women tend to go for the fit look over the freaky ripped look. 72.5% in one survey went for the Brad Pitt physique from Fight Club, and only 1% went for Frank Zane by comparison. The only variation were those who were self-identified as athletes. And then Zane increased by 14%, and Pitt dropped by 18.7%, but still remained in the lead. And 89.2% of women cite that a guy caring for his health is important, but still 74.5% want a man stronger than them, 61.8% want a man who can protect them, and 60.8% want him to look his best. The takeaway here, unless you compete often or your career requires it, being freaky isn't desired by the opposite sex. They prefer healthy, strong, able, and good-looking, and apparently the Brad Pitt look takes the prize. Now, I would never suggest you lift for the ladies, but rather for your own self-improvement and desires. That being said, if being attractive to the opposite sex is a prime mover and shaker for you, those stats are worth noting to uh, um, put goals in perspective. Anyhow, do check the description of this video for a link to that entire survey's results, which are actually incredibly in-depth. Uh, that's it. That is if you're interested. Now, let's look at the ladies. Now, bear in mind, the health consequences are shared between genders, but the minimum body fat percentages are different. Both very low and very high levels of body fat lead to declines in estrogen. Estrogen plays a role in your female-specific characteristics. Menstrual cycle regulation, ovulation, lactation, bone health and formation, blood clotting, vaginal lubrication, etc. It's quite a comprehensive list, so a decline would be no bueno. You need a healthy balance, but how much body fat is just right? According to research, 17% is a minimum body fat for women to maintain their menstrual cycles. But to maintain fertility, a body fat percentage of at least 22% is suggested. Thus, 17% is too low. 22% will cover you for both aspects. And while the average bikini competitor competes around 12 to 15 percent, and the average figure or physique girl around 10 to 12 percent, if you don't desire to compete, 22 percent will still look great while not hindering your reproductive health. Thus, for most women simply looking to get defined but remain healthy, I suggest maintaining around a 22 percent minimum, unless you desire to compete. And in that case, I suggest leaning out for a show or shows but I would advise not attempting to maintain that contest or near contest weight for the rest of the year. And it isn't just your hormones you need to worry about, guys and girls, but also your heart rhythms, energy levels, body temperature, exercise recovery, bone health, cognitive abilities, mood, and skin. All are negatively impacted by dipping your body fat into unhealthfully low levels. And the suggestions I've presented in this video for both genders are right in line with the experts on the matter, according to a piece by Scientific American. But more importantly than any of these health suggestions is that you respect yourself. Do not give others control over your emotions and confidence. 
However, in respecting yourself, bear in mind that being unhealthfully lean is really no better than being unhealthfully fat. And that statement is supported by research. Craft your body to the parameters that meet your desires, but also that keep you healthy. And fuck the shallow negativity and criticisms of others, who likely possess you know, mental health issues and or insecurities that they feel the need to project onto you, to belittle you or to bring you down. Be proud, be strong, and work to improve your health and life. And also remember, just because someone looks healthy doesn't mean they actually are. Just some food for thought there. Anyhow, be sure to like and share this video and get it out there to maybe help and motivate someone else. I am sure many need to hear this message. And subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content. Otherwise, till next time, my fit, formidable, and fantastic friends.